Thanks for staying with us. So I'll take the picture story in punch. Um, so a yet to be identified pregnant woman and eight others sustained varying degrees of injury following a gas explosion that occurred at the Alaba Lane, Alagba Bia, Alaya Biagba community in the Ajegunle Apapa area of Lagos State. Um, according to reports by the Fire and Rescue Service, uh, they said that the preliminary inquiry revealed um, that the, there was a possible leakage um, at, a, at, um, at, um, at, the, at the store. So what happened was that he added that the fire destroyed four commercial tricycles, six lockup stores, and a portion of the bungalow building. So the several different gas cylinders were traded in that area, and one of them was set off by a possible leakage that broke a high-tension cable and started the fire. Prelim preliminary investigation revealed that several various gas cylinders traded also connected it to the high tension, and that's what caused all the fire. Unfortunately, I mean, nobody has died so far. Many all the, um, um, the survivors are receiving in, um, um, treatment at the trauma center in Bagada um, General Hospital here. Okay. We said nine people have suffered different degrees of burns and injury, including a pregnant woman and child, an adult, male, female, who are recuperating at the, actually at their Jeromi General Hospital, not Bagada. Okay. All right, let's, uh, there's another story in punch. Okay, let's move on quickly now to the Nigerian Tribune. FG approves 25% and 35% salary increase for civil servants. Senators quarrel, quarrel points fingers over seat allocation. You've denied that. Reps to NERC halt hike in electricity tariff. I signed executive order 10 to unlock 10 billion fresh oil gas sector investments in Tinumbu. Social media now priority for national security, this is NSA. Emir Philip faces fresh charges to be arraigned May 15th. Petro scarcity, marketers to flood market with 300 million liters. Ipman agonizes over 200 billion naira debt. And Ugo government alerts residents of looming flood disaster. Which story in Tribune? Ah, okay, so I have the executive order 10 um, um, or to unlock 10 billion fresh oil and gas investment. So the president is speaking at a two day retreat titled Navigating Change Legislative Strategies for Economic Transformation. Um, um, you know, gave insight into, into the executive order 10, which is meant to unlock about $10 billion fresh investment into the oil and gas sector. It was represented by the um, um, chief of staff to the president, and he spoke about, you know, the opportunities. He says, because, you know, oil has continued to be, or largely been the main state of our economy. He says his administration is working tirelessly to change this and diversify our economy from over-reliance on production of fossil fuel. And, um, however, they are determined to maximize the revenue potential of the oil and gas sector. And they also talked about how this um, executive <coughs> order 10 is uh, meant to also streamline contracting processes, procedures, and timelines from 36 to 6 months. And the other also seeks to ensure that local content requirements are implemented without impeding investment or cost competitiveness on the oil and gas sector. But I'll leave the tax collection issue, I think you have it from the speaker's point of view. Yes, I have that in Vanguard. But what I have in the Tribune is the National Security Advisor, Marlon Nuhurubadu. Uh, he says social media has become an issue of national security under the new dispensation. Um, this was in a meeting in Abuja with spokespersons of organizations under the umbrella of Strategic Communication Interagency Policy Committee. So he listed the preponderance of fake news, misinformation, and disinformation as threats to national security and then and public engagement. He says that uh, you know some have become quite adept across the world um, at the use of social media platforms, um, you know, to shape public opinion against citizens. He says this is a threat both global and local and presents an immediate and national security priority. So he's saying that. Um, that the security sector must address that use of media and social media platforms in creating division between citizens and governments. Anyways, the whole gist of the matter is that this is a serious security threat now, the way it's being used by unscrupulous people yeah. to cause division. And so it's a, it's a matter of urgency for that department. And yes, we, I think yeah, we mainly it. agree that yeah, absolutely. we understand the threat. <laughs> have a story? Yes, I have a story on Dangote, the issue of um, the license. The federal government on Tuesday announced that it was set to issue a fully valid operating license to the 650,000 barrels per day capacity Dangote Petroleum Refinery. 
um, the chief executive NMDPRA, Farouk Ahmad, told industry players and other stakeholders that it will issue a fully valid operating license to the refinery very soon. And three other refineries as well. They will soon all get their um, operating license. 15 gas facilities have valid licenses already. Okay. 1,199 facilities have valid license on the, in the downstream industry. 176 operators hold gas import permits. 130 dep depots have valid license. 69 okay. hold coastal vessel licenses. NMDPR has also, has also has licensed in total 9,464 retail outlets as at 10 a.m. On, on, the, on the 30th of April, 2024. Okay. Uh, I was going to take the Ogun State government running residents as so they're running Waikiki and others who live in the oh. in Ogun State. <laughs> uh, they want the residents in the flood prone areas of, to locate to relocate to safer locations. Wow. Um, or have or higher elevations because mm. of the disaster that is looming. According to Nan, 20 states I think across the country or 20 local governments were already um, already informed about the imminent flood that's coming between the month of April and November. So according to the, the, to the federal government had written to about 31 states, actually, 31 states, including local states, informing them of this flood coming up. The commissioner said that 16 out of 20 local governments within the state are expected to rec record heavy rainfall. So they're saying that state government was already making necessary um, um, arrangements to, to avert it. But however, it can be averted to ensure that people are safe. But mm -hmm. if they're living in those areas, please begin to find higher ground or move mm -hmm. completely. Please, she mentioned these higher grounds now, so that people know where to go, where to move to. Yeah, Not to just say higher ground. They should just move to the Lumo, the Lumo Rock. <laughs> Vanguard. Uh, let's find a story. FG approves pay rise for workers as labor leaders lament hardship. Uh, Nigeria's VAT collection lowest in Africa, says Speaker Abbas. Someone who restates commitment to improve lives in Lagos of Lagos residents. And fuel scarcity, eight vessels discharge over 300 million liters at Papa and other ports. Okay, which story? Um, so the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Abbas Tajidin, has decried that Nigeria's efficiency in collecting VAT, that's the value added tax, was the lowest among its African peers. And he says that this is as a result of significant inefficiencies in the tax system. So he's saying that the 10th House um, is ready to aid economic policies and programs of the president's of this administration. Um, he's, he also says engagement to stakeholders on laws governing finance, tax, and all subsectors of the economy with the aim of causing positive reforms. Um, you know, basically, I, I read through it. He's just saying their focus is going to be on tax reforms, modernization, as well as review of the implementation of the Petroleum Industry Reform Act 2021. And everything is just to make sure that uh, our nation's economic landscape uh, you know, is, is better, that it's geared towards economy, um, recovery, growth, and sustainable development. OK, so I have the um, full scarcity. Uh, according to the chairperson of MEMA, MEMA is the major energy marketers association of nigeria and he the md of um, nmpc retail limited they are of course first of all empathizing with nigerians over this hardship but the chairman of Meman says that they also he wants to reassure he says let me quote him Meman deeply empathizes with the, with nigerians facing the challenges occasioned by the current availability of pms and the resulting queues at many retail outlets. You can see the frustration and difficulties this situation is creating. The downstream, uh, downstream regulator, uh, NMDPR, and other key stakeholders across the value chain are fully engaged and supportive to eliminate the queues as we speak. Our top priority is to restore stability and ensure that full supplies reach all depots and retail outlets. And while this situation is, uh, has been challenging, we currently have our members taking um, products from eight vessels this week, over 300 million liters of PMS right now are being you know, distributed. And hopefully very soon we will not have the queues anymore. So I want to be reassured, me, I'm reassured. 
that I will not go and suffer today because I came on a yellow <laughs> yellow pointer to work. Mm. 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 Hoping that um, I'll be able to report to this week. Yeah. After. Right, let's see if there's any story here. Let's just read the headlines. Inflation, Naira depreciation plunge, Nigerians to lowest wage. You know, that's the Guardian. Uzodima appoints himself as Commissioner for Lands. Will be fought work on Lagos, Calabar, Highway amid protests. Reps NBA Falano, who rewards seek reversal of electricity tariff hike. Operatives repel attack as terrorists abduct four in Kaduna, in Castina. May Day, FG approved salary increase for civil servants. Okay, I think that is all we can take on today's review. We're going to short break. When we come back, we continue with the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.